autumn 2009 and workers at the Olympic Stadium were flying high. Giving their work the royal seal of approval was none other than Her Majesty the Queen. I think the Queen coming here reminds everybody that this is a national project. She met people who are working on the Olympic site from around the country. She has been keeping an eye on progress, but she was particularly interested to see it from the inside. Over at the BT Tower, there was a bit of a treat on Halloween. To celebrate a thousand days to go to the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games, a spectacular pyrotechnic display. And just over a month later, it was time to celebrate the countdown to a thousand days to go to the Paralympic Games. It was held at Greenwich Park, future home to the equestrian events and the home to time. It's a thousand days to go. We want to deliver on the promise to ensure that this is everyone's Paralympic Games. It will be, the, I think, the best games in the home country. It will be absolutely fantastic to be part of that. I think it really signifies the time, like the clock's ticking. We've got to get there. We've got to get more athletes into like disability sport. It's a really, really important milestone. The Paralympics are such a large part of our story. And whilst the clock counts down, some people simply couldn't wait to see what the Olympic Park is going to look like. It's brilliant to the Prime Minister and the entire Cabinet. And I think this will be one of the highlights uh, of the London landscape for many years to come. But it's not all about the venues. The 17,000 athletes and officials have to stay somewhere. And the first of the Olympic Village apartment blocks had a topping out ceremony signifying structural completion. Well, I think they're going to be blown away both by the quality of the building, the beautiful green spaces, and really just how close this all is to the action in terms of the Olympic Park and the rest of the city of London. To the south of the village, another roof was in place. The iconic structure of the aquatic centre lowered onto its final three resting positions. More than 7,000 people are now working on the Olympic Park, proof that this project is creating jobs in challenging economic times. Venues are just part of the legacy to be left after the Games, and making sure that it's a place of beauty is not just a job for professional designers. We have some of the world's best landscape designers on this project and their skill is they will take those ideas and work with our, our two winners and incorporate them into our garden at the north end of the park. Both Hannah and Rachel have um, found an Olympic theme and uh, developed it in the most original way. Outside the park, progress was still being made with the other venues. Team GB and Paralympics GB came to Greenwich Park to see where they would be competing in 2012. It's a lovely venue and it's really motivating to see, like come here and see what it, you know, where it's going to take place. And there was more activity at Eton Dornay where work began to make the awesome rowing venue fit for the Olympic Games. Further afield still, London 2012's commitment to education and creating international inspiration reached India and Jordan. International inspiration is the cornerstone of London 2012's education legacy. Uh, the aim is to give opportunities to 12 million uh, young people in 20 countries. We're delighted that India was really our first project. We identified a country that had massive potential, loved sport, but had very low levels of participation in physical education in schools. To inspire others though, London 2012 has to be inspired itself. This is why projects awarded the prestigious Inspire mark are always welcome at London 2012 HQ. It, it represents an acknowledgement from obviously an organisation as mammoth as, as, as London 2012 or as the Olympic Committee, saying that we respect what you're doing and what you're doing is in line with the values of what this organisation and this event, this human event is supposed to be about. Another major project, Unlimited, has been launched to celebrate disability arts. Making it snappy down at the National Portrait Gallery was leading photographer Brian Griffin, launching a series of iconic images as part of the Cultural Olympiad. It's probably the biggest occasion in my lifetime, not just the photographs I'm doing, but the Olympics themselves. London 2012 welcomed its seventh Tier 1 partner, BMW. It's just one of the success stories with so many businesses all around the country getting involved. 2010 will be an important year with major challenges ahead. But with London 2012 in great shape, how confident was the IOC's Coordination Commission that everything was on track? With less than 1,000 days to go, we are confident about the delivery of excellent Olympic Games in 2012.